Well, hello, good people. Good day, good people. I need to talk to you a little more about PHP object-oriented programming. We talked about this in the last tutorial and I showed you how you can declare a class and why you would use that at all. And in this next tutorial here, we are going to create an object from this class. We already started with that too, but in this tutorial we are going to start um, to create an object with uh, different parameters, you know, because last time this object was just empty and this time we're gonna fill it with different, well, properties. Um, and also we will talk about scope, as you see, because this always goes hand in hand. If you try to create objects from classes, you always have to think about scope, whether the properties and methods are visible to the objects that you create. Let's go ahead and talk about scope. Now, what is scope? Well, we talked about this in other tutorials and um, you can refer to them to the general PHP tutorial that I made for you. And in this case, it's pretty similar. Scope is just visibility, okay? And that means that properties and methods can be visible to other functions or objects or they can not. We have three different cases. Well, the first one is public, the second one protected and the third one is private. Public means that something like a property in a class is accessible to everybody outside the class. So you can just go ahead and create objects from it and use it in whatever way you like. Protected means that it's accessible to the class itself, what it always is, and extended classes. You'll see that in a minute. And private means it's just accessible inside its own class. Sounds confusing. And if you're not sure what object-oriented programming is, I refer, uh, refer to the last tutorial where we talked about the blueprints and the objects that we create. Um, now I think that you have this knowledge. If not, please go back to this video. In the last tutorial, we created an object where we created a class car first, which has a method, which is public. And this function acceleration just echoes out room. All right. Or vroom. Excuse my, <laughs> excuse my spelling. And um, here I created a child uh, file for you that includes this file here with the parent class. That's why I commented out I'm the parent class. I am the child class. But there's no class here yet. You'll see that in a minute. Okay. Now let us start by creating a car. For example, let's make a Mustang. This is how you would do it. You um, create a variable. In this case, it's called an object, but you would write it exactly like a variable. And you would use the keyword new, then the keyword or the name of the class. And here we go. Now you have a Mustang, which is a Mustang, which is a new car. To print that out, we uh, use this because this is way better for readability. And uh, like this, you would uh, be able to read it better. So now we printed it out in a beautiful way. You could also leave the pre out, but it just looks better like that. Okay. So we have a car, which is an object, which is empty. Okay. Now, if you wanted to access the function, the function is in the car as well, because car is an object that has been created from this class. So if you wanted to access the public function acceleration within Mustang, you would do it like this. You could echo out the Mustang minus greater than acceleration. And for functions, always remember the parentheses, then refresh and we have room. All right. That's, that's how you would do that. So you see that the function acceleration since it is public, is visible to the new object that you created. We created a new object named Mustang, which inherited, and that's an important term here, which inherited the properties and the methods, in this, this case, just the method from the class car. All right. 
Now, let's start by creating properties. Properties. Now, let's go ahead and create a property here. Now we have the function over here, which is the method of the class car, and now we create properties. And for these properties, we will have to use one of the three keywords that we talked about before, okay? So either we use public, or we use private, or we use, um, well, public, private, or protected. And let's start by uh, creating something public, which for example is the color, okay? Refresh, we're good. So now, if you want to, let me erase that a little for visibility. So if you were to use this color here, then let's print it out first. We have a car object which has a color which is empty, okay? This is important. Now, if you wanted to assign a value to this property, you would do it like that. You would go ahead and say Mustang and then the pointer again, which is minus greater than, then you choose color and you set it equal to blue, for example. Remember semicolon, refresh, and now, there we go, we have the color, which is blue, all right? You can always change this. Now you can just copy this line, and you could go ahead and make it red, then it would be red, and so on. So in the class itself, the property um, color is still empty, but in the object Mustang, color now has a value which is red and now it is blue again. So we could do this just because the visibility was public. Now let's go ahead and make another one which is private and uh, call it weight. So the weight of the car is private. I don't know why you would do that, but you can. Here we go. So now you see in the car object, it is visible that there is something like a weight. Okay, so class car, property weight, visibility private. Now, if I would want to change that, let's just copy and paste this and set weight equal to 2000 or whatever, okay? If I refresh this, we get a fatal error because it cannot access a private property, okay? This is important. This property, weight, can only be used within the class. These are the parentheses that limit the usage of this property named weight. Okay, this is important to understand. And the object Mustang is outside of this fence. Imagine these two curly braces are the fence that um, that surround your house and the house is this blueprint named car, okay? The house would be the class now and this is the fence and everybody can see the color and it can also use the color like we see here, but nobody can use the weight because it's somewhere downstairs in the basement. Uh, people know that it is there as you, as you could see before, but people cannot use it, okay? They're too far away, they're outside of the fence. And this is why you cannot set weights to anything right now. Now, why would you do that? Well, for example, weight could be something like a database connection or could be a parameter that you don't want to be used, that you don't want to see used anywhere outside of this function and well the function well, the whole class okay but you could also make this whole function private if you wanted to now who can use weight the only one who can use weight because it's private is the own class so let's go ahead and create a public function that does nothing 
but echo out um, the weight. This is how you would do it. Don't, with the this keyword, you can point to properties inside, okay, sorry, inside uh, the function, okay? This is um, a keyword that is reserved and you can, with this, you can point to weight. Now you would not use the dollar sign twice, but now we can go ahead and echo out from our object Mustang, sorry, use the dollar sign again, from our, from our object Mustang, you can access the public function, um, how, how can we call it? Just wait uh, function, okay, why not? Just the wait function. And you can access this from your object because it inherited it. And then you can see that this Oh, sorry, uh, Mustang wait function, echo this way. I printed out a little too much here. Here we go. Let's just put weight to 2000, okay? Just we have something to be printed out. And uh, this is what happens if you do this, okay? So now you see, we can access we get access to uh, the the weight variable. Well, we didn't print out anything before because it does it didn't have a value. Okay, uh, now we can access the public function here, and the function has access to the variable or to the property weight. That is because it is within the class. It's within the fence. So imagine that in the garden that you are standing outside of now. You're standing outside of this fence here. But inside of the garden, there's somebody called weight function and he has access to the weight. So you can call him and say, hey, please tell me the weight, sir. And he goes, okay, wait a minute. Ah, we have a private property here, but I'm allowed to use it because I'm standing within the garden here so I can get access to it. And I tell you what it does because that's what I do. I get access to it. Okay. So now we talked about public, public accessible to everybody, protected. Oh, wait, sorry, private is just accessible within the class. And now we will talk about protected, which is the last one of these uh, three scopes. And this one, we should clean this up a little for readability. And okay, let's, let's erase some stuff here just for you to be able to read what's happening. Okay, now we can set weight to protect it. Let's do that. Now, if you want to access a protected property, how would you do that? You can try and echo it out like before. So let's do that. Mustang and point to weight semicolon and you get an error mess message because you cannot access a protected property now but like i told you before uh, in this we can access these properties in the class itself and in extended classes now what are extended classes i will show you right now extended classes are classes that inherit everything from the parent class this is why i showed you here i am the parent class now here in the next file we included this file and we uh, can tell the child class like i don't know let's say the main class is car and now we have a more specific class, which is electric car. Okay, electric car, keyword, it extends car. Okay, also the class electric car extends car. Put the curly braces here and now this class has access to weight and let's do a public function here which again echoes out 
this, the pointer from before, remember this accesses, has access to the class's own properties and methods and, uh, no, just properties, sorry. And it echo, let's echo out this, uh, what was it? Wait. Okay, now if you go ahead and call this function, first of all, let's do a uh, an object. So, uh, run, 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 run. Prius, is that electric car? Yeah, right, kind of, huh? Prius equals new electric car. And now we echo out. Well, we don't have, we don't have to echo it out. We can just call it, right? So Prius. <laughs> well, you should always give your function names because if you don't do that, there's really no use in the function. So access protectors. Here we go. What is this echoing out? Here, for better vis visibility, we created a class, electric car. It extends the class car. Extending just means, well, somebody next to this car house built the exact same house and it inherited everything that is in there, like the carpet, the lamps, whatever, okay? And since weight is protected, this class can inherit weight. Now, you see this function here gets access to weight just by pointing to it. And when we call it here from a new electric car like the Prius, he, his, his possibility to get access to this public function means that by accessing this public function, which has access to a protected property, it can echo it out, okay? This was a rather long tutorial, guys. I hope it wasn't too confusing. Um, basically, what you should take away from this whole thing is this slide here. Um, something public is accessible to everybody that passes by the house. Something protected is accessible to everybody inside the house and the extended houses and private is just accessible in the class or the house. All right. I see you in the next tutorial.